Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here today and tell you about some of the work going on in my laboratory, not specifically dealing with stem cells, which is typically what we do, but trying to enable a better delivery, a better survival of cell therapies in the eye and in other compartments of the body. So the disease we're targeting initially is retinitis pigmentosa, a progressive retinal degeneration leading to blindness. So in the early stages of this disease, rod photoreceptors, the photoreceptors that are responsible for seeing in dim light are lost, and the cones remain. It's at that stage where we think we can uh, deliver therapeutics that can preserve the cones and lead to a preservation of vision. So if you look at the different stages of retinal degeneration, early when the cells are remaining, the photoreceptors are still alive, gene therapy has some, some use. Late stages, where there are no more photoreceptors, then therapies like optogenetics are needed. In the middle are cell-based therapies that either can deliver neurotrophic factors or, in fact, deliver new photoreceptors. So, as you may be aware, the eye and the retina has really led the way in regenerative medicine, specifically in stem cells and gene therapy. But some of these therapies have not lived up to their potential because the cells that are delivered don't survive to make it to the site and restore vision. So initially, the cells are injected out of small bore needles, 41 gauge needles in some cases, and this has very high shear stress that kills a lot of cells. They never actually make it into the eye alive. Once delivered into the eye, they also can diffuse away from their target site. And there is an addition in the degenerating microenvironment of the eye. It's a very hostile microenvironment. All of these are challenges that make cell delivery to the eye very difficult. So this is our platform technology. It is a gel, a biomimetic hydrogel, that has lower vis higher viscosity than water, but it, so it can be del still delivered through a needle, but it, del delete, it, del it diminishes the shear forces that are, that are impacting the cells for survival. So our technology is based on chemistry, material science, and stem cell biology. We, we, have, uh, we have formulated the, the, the polymer based on hyaluronic acid and gelatin. These are common components in a lot of hydrogels, and specifically in the eye, they are the components of the vitreous humor. Where our IP comes in and where our technology uh, becomes more applicable in the eye is we are cross-linking the hydrogel and gelatin with specific cross-linkers to create hydrogels that are tunable to very different applications. These, cell, these, these polymers can survive, can last for from days up to months and they can deliver cells and biologicals in that time frame. So again, we're decreasing the shear force, these viscoelastic forces in the eye uh, following injection are killing cells. We can de decrease those. We can target these cells to very specific areas of the retina, the subretinal space, for instance, the retinal ganglion cell layer, and they will stay there as opposed to diffusing to other areas of the eye. And they provide a de facto extracellular matrix that protects these um, cells that are delivered or biologicals that are delivered and nurtures them in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutritional environment. So again, when cells are delivered through a small bore needle into the subretinal space with a vitreous chamber, about 80% of them die and don't make it to their target site. So I mentioned we can target these hydrogels to deliver cells specific, to specific compartments. We're doing work on retinal ganglion cell delivery in glaucoma models. Here you can see polymers that have delivered these cells to the inner surface of the retina, where they take up residence in the retinal ganglion cell layer and start growing axons down the optic nerve. Similar, we can, similarly, we can transplant human retinal progenitor cells to the subretinal space and these cells also take up residence in this new layer, and uh, the, the, the hydrogel is degraded, and the cells take up residence in the appropriate location. 
Importantly, we have not seen any safety issues with these hydrogels causing retinal detachment, retinal injury, or deformation of the architecture of the retina. There are a number of different cell types we've worked on over the years. Human retinal progenitor cells made it to stage 2B of a clinical trial with a small company called Reneuron. We've worked on human cone progenitor cells and have a startup company, Oculus Vision. Marie Chetty is here somewhere in the audience, the CEO of this company. These are aimed at cone dystrophy and diseases where cones are lost, such as macular degeneration. And we've done extensive work with the Gilbert Foundation generating retinal ganglion cell precursors for use in replacing retinal ganglion cells that are lost in neurofibromatosis and glaucoma. So this is just one example of the standard of care for delivering stem cells into the eye is transplanting them in PBS, um, salt water solution. And that leads to very little survival of cells in the target site. Here we have two examples on the right of gel formulations that we've delivered these cells on. And you can see we get much better survival and delivery of these cells to the appropriate location. So our lead gel, IGT-1, has is, is, is been extensively characterized for use in delivering of cells to the vitreous chamber. One of the big concerns of delivering cells or polymers to the vitreal chamber is an in increase in intraocular pressure. And we've shown that that does not happen with this polymer. And more recently, we've developed a, a novel cell line for neuroprotective use. Um, a human cell that can be very neuroprotective, and we've tested this in the RD1 mouse at various stages after transplantation, and we show a profound increase in retinal, in retinal photoreceptor survival, specifically cone survival in the central retina. And that's been a challenge for many decades, in fact, trying to take this RD1 model and preserve its central cones for, in this case, 50 days, and that's never been shown before at this level. So we see a massive increase in the survival of cones following delivery of these cells to the retina. And if they're delivered on the gel, as you can see in blue, it's many fold more increased. So where are we now in development? We started this startup in gel about six months ago. Uh, we are working on a pre-seed now with, a, with an investor and that's a million dollar pre-seed that's going to allow us to do the larger animal, rabbit studies, on intraocular pressure, two CROs to confirm the data that we've obtained in our laboratory of rescue of photoreceptors, and, and of course, an in-house novel formulation study to get us to the next stage where we're gonna do GMP manufacturing of these hydrogels and uh, generate uh, GMP cells for use in our neuroprotective therapies. And I'll stop there, and thank you very much.